I, I think that I try to treat this role as a, to try to be the best steward of the taxpayer dollars that I could possibly be. When I think about the families of my district and how hard they work, and then the, their taxpayer dollars are sent here, and, to, and, and the American people in my district, they're frustrated. And, and I, it's, the question is, who's to, be held, who's to be accountable for this, right? The concern that I have is that but by having all this uncertainty, we, when we cannot pass an audit, then all of this, the conspiracy theories, when people talk about military industrial complex, all of these, these things start, it, be, it becomes more prevalent because there is no certain, there's nothing that you can point to. So my question is, you know, we haven't passed a clean audit ever. You're the only, the Department of Defense is the only agency that has not done so. Congress has mandated that DOD achieve a clean audit by December 28th of 2028. So my question to each one of you on the panel is, do you think that that will happen? It's a, it's a great question. I know there's a, a lot of concern expressed about that date and can we meet that date? It will definitely be a challenge. Um, but I believe if we are have a, few, uh, a couple of key elements in place, I think we can do it. Leadership commitment, First and foremost, more important even than the resources is the sense of priority that our leadership has to have on this. Um, I feel, I, I do feel comforted over the last two years, the last three years really, uh, Secretary Austin and Secretary Hayes take this very seriously. Um, um, they have issued, um, and I know I've introduced, I think I've shared some correspondence uh, um, with both the chairman and the, and the ranking members uh, team on, on some of the things that, the, that they have done in getting not just the financial management folks like myself that are here today, but it, it, it's going to require effort from all of the functional areas, the acquisition uh, functional area, the, the um, chief information officer, uh, folks from uh, human resources. It, it is an all hands on deck. Uh, just like we, we gave the example of the Marine Corps and the great success they had this year, very hard work. But, that, but, but the Commandant and the ACMAC from the Marine Corps, the Assistant Commandant, had required everybody to, to be a part of everybody's business. It was that profound, uh, and he was very, very adamant about that. We need, we will require that same tone at the top at the department level. So that, the resources. The other thing I, I'm, I'm excited about too recently is technology. We've utilized, uh, we haven't talked much about it today, but Advana is an example, is a platform, a database, data platform that, that, that helps us better remediate, identify where our problem areas are, the areas that need reconciliation and to remediate those things. And so we're utilizing some of that. With that advanced technology to do better data analytics is we need personnel to also be trained to do that data analytics. And we're working on that very, very much, a uh, workforce. In addition to the systems, in addition to the tone at the top, is we have to have quality professional people to do this. Uh, and we're working toward that, making sure we're developing professional competencies within our financial management workforce, but also logistics and acquisition as well. So they are all trained on the importance of audit. Mr. Mansfield, do you believe that there will be a clean audit by 2028? So, uh, you know, our role as the Inspector General is to perform the audit. And so I'm very hesitant to make any predictions before we've actually done the work. Um, uh, so I, I, I'm going to kind of refrain from saying whether they will pass or not. What I would echo is what uh, Mr. Stephan said. Uh, it, it's, uh, there's a lot of work to do before they get there. Uh, and I would also add the department, um, as, as much as it's making progress and has, I think, a solid tone at the top at this point, uh, does have a history of sliding uh, expectations and goals to the right. And so it'll be a difficult uh, and uphill battle for the department, although I think they're, they're, they're committed to it, uh, but it still waits to be seen, and we'll have to do the actual audit work before, we can, before I can give you an opinion on whether they'll pass or not. Okay, Mr. Kahn. I think there'll be, um, there will be early indicators whether or not they can meet that timeline. Um, the system is going to drive that having compliance system across the department. They have to be in place, in our view, uh, by the end of fiscal year 2026 so that they can begin to process transactions in 27 and 28 to be able to reach an opinion by that date. Uh, so we will know we perform oversight of the DOD. So as we do our work, we'll have good indication as to how the progress is uh, going and what the path to audit, auditability, uh, auditability looks like and if those timelines uh, can be met. 
Uh, okay, so Mr. Stevens, Steph, is it Stephens or Steve? Sorry. Um, you said that it's going to take a commitment from leadership. Mm -hmm. And then you said the current, uh, you know, the, the current leadership is committed. If they're committed, why are we not there yet? Um, I think we're making progress. And uh, it, um, you know, obviously, we've been under audit now for six, full financial statement audit for six years, over six years into our seven I think years. like the American people who are yeah. listening, yeah. they would wonder, it's been six years. That shows there hasn't been real any any commitment. Um, I, I do believe we're at an inflection point, though. I think I believe we're over this last two years we've been at an inflection point. Um, the one thing too that was pointed out, which I think has actually energized the leadership, is the NDAA 2024 that came out with the with the mandate for 2028. Uh, initially, we saw that. You know, a lot of people looked at it as a threat. You know, this is this is challenging. But but I, I have to report to you that. This has created an enormous amount of energy in the department. Every functional meeting that we have that addresses audit and financial audit remediation starts out with, team, we have a mandate from Congress for 2028. So, you, so that has been very helpful. Actually. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, can I ask one more question? It, is this an organizational behavior issue? Is that, that's what I'm reading into this, is that you've got a cultural resistance to a lot of this. I, but I believe that's changing. Okay. Uh, I believe that's changing. I mean, I think there's a natural, you know, we, you know, the uh, the old army's motto was to fight and win our nation's wars, right? But, but it's also, I think, even I'll take the army's example because I spent a lot of time in the army. Uh, they developed a process that, but we have to be accountable as well, and we have to have sound business operations. That that will only help our readiness. And I think we have to instill that in our leadership, our senior leadership, operational leadership, that hey, doing this. But getting better business operations, getting more sound, getting audible will actually help readiness in the long term. That's got to be the message. And that's what I think is being received now better than it has before. Thank you. I yield back.